Okay, so let's look at the tank setup. Now I'm going to glance over here where my screen is. Okay, so we have four 55 gallon fish tanks. In each tank we have three koi and one goldfish. Now, why three koi and one goldfish? Koi, it turns out, are our best uh, model for common carp. They are essentially common carp, aren't they? Okay, and they have very well developed sensory systems for amino acids. And you know, those are our primary subjects. Okay, but the big thing is if the goldfish also switch on and goldfish have less in the way of uh, amino acid receptors, you know, you're really hitting it on the head right there. So, you know, we look for the koi mostly, but if the goldfish join in, it's a home run. Okay, now let's look at the tank in some more detail. We have, of course, <laughs> a lot of filters, all right? And because we have to remove all the amino acids after every trial. And we also wait literally a week between trials in any tank, so the amino acids are out of the tank. As you can see, we have a pair of large volume canister filters. You know, they're the kind of the most powerful filters you can get pretty much. They have a large internal volume of carbon granules, okay, to remove amino acids. We also have the standard back filter, as you see with any aquarium, which also has carbon in it. And then most importantly, and this is kind of new, we actually have an under gravel filter. Under gravel filters are super important because amino acid solutions are denser than water. They will settle into the gravel and less clean thoroughly they'll, you know, come out in subsequent experiments and really mess things up. So the incorporation of an under gravel filter is super important. We let that run, you know, for a week just to get sure, make sure everything's out of the gravel. Okay, so that's the setup. Let's look at some experiments. So we're about to add the first smallest concentration of stimulant into the tank. We add simply pouring, we pour the solution in front of an impeller, which makes the solution spread throughout the whole tank. Okay, so we'll see that, and then we'll see the fish's behavior to that addition. Now, in order to understand the fish's behavior, you've really got to understand concentration gradients, okay? So if we look at the screen, we see that when an amino acid is placed or amino acid solution is put in front of the impeller, because of the density, it will sink straight away, okay? So you get a larger concentration right underneath the impeller. And then it will also get blown a little bit and circulate around the tank, okay? What this does, this creates in front of the glass a kind of a a flat area where we have two kind of concentrations that are locally high at the end and kind of a spread between them. And if you watch the fish's behavior, they literally follow this trail. They don't really go anywhere else in the tank. They follow the concentration gradient. And this is the key finding of this work. Okay, so fish, and it makes total sense, right? So the fish will detect amino acids and then follow them until they get more and more and more concentrated. If you think about this, it makes absolute sense in the wild because a food source will be emitting, you know, amino acids, all right? And the further the fish is away from the food source, the less amino acids they are. So they basically turn into that stream and follow the amino acid strength to the food source, all right? And that's exactly what we see in our results. And when they find the most concentrated source of amino acids, they go into feeding mode. So we'll see a searching mode, then a feeding mode, okay? And it's concentration dependent. Okay, so we saw the fish definitely follow those concentration gradients and they ended up literally in the strongest concentrated area of amino acid sitting on the bottom. Now remember that solution is dense, so it sinks into the gravel. 